I don't know if you knew this or not. Probably, probably don't. But coming into the, the game today, there wasn't a, hasn't been a single player in the ACC which is a uh, had ten assists in the game. You've now done it three straight times. And just uh, again, just address that just a little bit if you would, and just how key that has been to really kind of get this offense going so far this year. Um, well, I didn't I didn't know it was three times in a row until after the game, but um, I think most of that is just um, a product of our offense of Coach Cream constantly teaching pace, keep making the next play, the open guy gets the ball. And I'm um, trusting your teammates. I mean, we've all put in the same amount of work um, every year. Um, we can see some of the players just growing right in front of our eyes, like Tumani, um, Ty Fagan. I mean, those guys are playing at a really high level. PJ making shots today. Um, and I think, I think, and even Christian Brown, who had a big time game today, mm -hmm. um, we saw some really good stuff out of him. And um, that, 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 those 10 assists or those back-to-back-to-back triple-double uh, double, double games is all a credit to them. Um, but like I said, I guess I, I am the point guard. I'm the one who gets it running. But uh, those are guys who finish the play, so they deserve as much credit as I do. Hey, Severe, your production's up a lot from last season. Um, did you make it a point during the offseason to train and work to uh, get more involved offensively? Um. I just uh, made a point to get better. I mean, obviously, if you're in the gym every day in quarantine, um, you're, the results are going to show. And um, that, that's what it's been so far. Um, I don't think I've made it a point to be more um, involved in the offense, but I am making a point to try to make every play, try to make a play for my teammates or myself, or try to make the, the right play every possession. And um, as of right now, um, it's kind of going good, um, having a balance of scoring and also – making guys better and my teammates making shots as well. We have next, we're going to go with Andy Walsh and then Davis Baker. Uh, hey, Savir. I guess um, they threw some zone at you all. I guess, you know, you all saw some lulls with that a little bit when they first start running it, uh, maybe halfway through the first half and then maybe starting the second half. But for the most part, how comfortable you are you um, or how adept are you to attacking the zone, you personally and you all as a team, I guess? Um, I think we're really comfortable with it. Um, it's something we saw a little bit of last year. And I think we got um, players this year who are skilled in that, and that you can move pieces around. Like Coach Dishon, um offense, this is, this is interchangeable offense where you, the one could play the five, the two could play the, the point, uh, the, the three could play the four, the four could play the one. So having guys who are skilled and can do a little bit of everything um, helps. And against the zone, once we figured out what, what they were weak at, um, how can we exploit it? We did it, and we ended up with 98 points with them playing zone in, man. So, I mean, that's that's really that's a really good takeaway from it. Hey, Severe, it seems like y'all played really fast tonight. Um, like you just said, excuse me, um, y'all play a lot of positionless basketball. Uh, how have you felt about the pace of play so far on offense this year? Um, I know for a fan perspective, it got to be exciting. <laughs> but um, I, I think I love I love the way we're playing right now. I mean, we are sharing it. Um, everyone's involved. Like uh, Coach, I had mentioned earlier, I think six guys were in double figures. Um, that's just a testament to how we practice. We practice with a lot of intensity, with a lot of speed. And of course, this is this is this isn't a perfect game, so we're gonna have turnovers. Always need to work on that. But um, overall, I mean, wh why would you not want to play a game that's fun and that's fast? Um, usually, those those two correlate, and um, that's what we've been able to do. And um, hopefully, yeah, we'll next we have Jen May and then Chip Towers. Uh, hey, Severe, it seems like all the talks about the offense, but I want to ask you about the team's defense tonight, you know, it's repeatedly turning them over, leading to fast breaks, you know, all that kind of stuff. If you're nodding your head, like it was – A, just how much of an emphasis is that and how much does that feed the offense and get things in rhythm with the fast breaks and, you know, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, um, it's been back-to-back -back games where we've had over 60 deflections as a team. And um, deflections lead to good, good things on the offensive end, whether it's a steal as a block or charge or just make, making, the defense, making the offense take a tough shot. And um, being that active defensively over the past two games um, has really helped us. And it allows us to show what we're good at in transition, allows us to show our speed, our athleticism, um, allows other guys to get going. And um, we like a fast-paced game, like you said, and we know if we can get stops on defensive end by rebounding, turning guys over um, and playing sound, our offense is always going to come. Severe, let's, let's face it, uh, your game is founded on getting to the rim. Uh, it's pretty amazing. I just wondered, you opened the game with a three, but, I, you know, a, a lot of people don't realize this. Going as fast as you do uh, and being able to make a, a, 
a layup going that fast. I mean, is this something that you have just practiced and mastered over years and years and years? Uh, I know it sounds simplistic, like how do you make those fast break layups? But I mean, uh, it's uh, going as fast as you do. It, that, that's not an easy thing. And, and what would you say is the art of the layup, right? Yeah. Um, as crazy as it sounds, I don't, I don't really practice layups going as fast as I can go. Um, I, I practice muscle memory, so how it feels when I'm at a certain angle of a layup. So I, I practice taking all different kinds of layups. I'm going slow motion so my body knows how to react um, and when, when a certain situation comes. But, um, yeah, I, I would say it's, it's a lot of practice. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't go too fast <laughs> all the time. I kind of slow it down just so I can feel every movement and, and what it's like to, for it to go in and what I can't do. So uh, to I know what I shouldn't do to miss it. So. Okay, last question is going to go to Palmer Tones. Yeah, Severe, y'all went on a 22-4 to four run in the second half. What was the atmosphere like amongst the team? Because it looked like, you know, y'all couldn't be stopped. Oh, man, that's great. That's great to hear um, that we couldn't be stopped. But I have to give all that credit to our bench and to our coaching staff. Um, we were locked in the whole game. Um, coaching Coach McClain and the rest of the coaches that really put together a great game plan. And um, they did, did a great job of reminding us, um, being vocal with us as, as we were being vocal with each other. And um, I think that's one advantage to not having so many uh, fans at the games that we can hear. We can hear the coaches. Um, we communicate, we communicate with each other a lot easier just knowing that we can have a simple conversation without, you know, the, 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 the loud sounds of the crowd. But um, I, I would say the bench and the coaching staff was a big part of that. And um, I think, yeah, I just think they were really, really good tonight, and that helped us. All right, thanks so much. Love you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm getting it. All right, up next, we have Justin Kyer. And we're going to start with Andy Walsh and then Davis Baker. Hey, Justin. Um, I guess, you know, playing next to Sabir Wheeler, how do you like sort of your role as that secondary playmaker next to him? How, how I guess, easy, easy does he make the game for you, and how do you like playing next to him? Um, it's good. He, he makes the game really easy. Um, as you guys see, um, he, the pace he plays with, it's allowed me to, um, you know, play faster as well. Um, and I'm actually learning from him. I'm learning from him um, as an older guy coming in, um, just how this program plays. Um, I learned by his speed and I learned by his decision making, um, just kind of where I can be and where I can, um, you know, educate our other guys and where they can be um, on the floor as well. Hey, Justin, um, obviously with you being an older guy, how does your experience help you um, so, so early in the season, especially after not playing last game, coming back this game and having a pretty big game? Yeah, um, you know, I just kind of, being the older guy, you got to do a lot of more things off the court, watching film and um, on the court in practice, you kind of, you know, read other things like you kind of read, you know, their actions on the film and Coach McClain, um, Coach Crean, the whole coaching staff does a great job um, with the scouting. And um, when they, you know, when they scout, I try to just pick a little, pick little things where um, it can make us, make it easier for our other guys to, um, you know, learn those faster. So, cause you know, we might have a game, you know, in a week or we might have a game back to back. So, um, you know, our head, our mental has got to be there 100%. Okay, up next we're gonna go with Anthony Dasher and then Ryan Curley. Hey Justin, congratulations tonight. Can you just kind of speak to the, I mean, again, you guys have eight newcomers, but uh, tonight especially, it really looked like y'all really starting to, to gel, really, you know, playing together, defensive end, offensive end. Uh, what do you kind of attribute that to, seemingly kind of picking that up so quickly? Yeah, um, I think honestly, we've been here since the summer and the guys have gelled really well, um, gelled really well. And we've played against each other for so long now that we're, you know, playing against different people. I think um, we're finally getting it. I don't think we're there yet. I don't think, I think we can get a lot better. Um, but it's always good to come out, you know, 3-0. and and, and our coaching staff has done a great job on getting us prepared for these games. Um, and yeah, everyone's, I think everyone's getting a little bit of piece of their role. Um, um, we're still figuring some stuff out. And, and like I said, I think everybody needs to, you know, take it up a notch. And I think we can be better than we are now. So that's an exciting future for sure. Hey, Justin, obviously you're one of the 
you're one of the many transfers on this team this year, and it's not a normal time. You know, like the preseason, everything that wasn't the same. Um, how was the gelling process with everybody just in the off season with it being so different? Well, it was it was it was, it was good. Um, off the court, it was really well. Um, guys, you know, became best friends as soon as we stepped foot on campus. But um, for basketball, I think it took a little while just to feel everything. But we, you know, um, I think the off the court. Um, bondage, you know, really helped us on the court as well. And then, um, you know, throughout, you know, the summer into the fall, um, we just started to, you know, find those pieces and find those roles. Um, and as soon as we started practice, you know, I think guys just kind of knew what was going on and, and, you know, certain people would, what they would and wouldn't do. Um, and Coach Crean, like I said, the coach staff have done a great job on that um, since the summer, you know, talking to us, um, you know, watching film um, and practice just kind of, you know, picking the little things that we can get better at. They've done a great job in getting us prepared for these games. Okay, up next, we're going to go to Mark Weiser and then Connor Riley. Justin, I wonder if you had a favorite uh, too many uh, throwdown tonight. I think he had several of them. And uh, ha have you seen a lot of that since you've joined the program, uh, you know, in the practice gym, his ability to, to make plays like that and finish strong? Yeah. Um, if you watch it, you'll see that windmill really got me excited, for sure. Um, but you know, ever since I got in here, it's, it makes the game better. Um, and Tamani's a great athlete, but we have a lot of great athletes on this team as well, um, as you guys see every night. So um, them being that athletic and being able to catch those lobs and, and you know, catch those dump-offs quick and get up, um, it makes the game a lot easier for us. It makes the game a lot easier for me, Savir, and the guys who can get them the ball. Um, and we've worked on that since I stepped foot on campus. So it's, um, yeah, those guys are great. And I think, like I said, I think they can get better. And I think, you know, those turnovers will get turned down by everybody and, and it will be a great team for sure. You guys had, I think, a, a 31 to seven edge and fast break points tonight. How important is it for you guys to consistently force turnovers so you guys can get out and run and get those easy dunks and layups? It's, it's very important. And, you know, that's how we want to play. We want to play fast. Um, we want to cut, like I said, we want to cut our turnovers down, but we want to make everybody else turn the ball over. So um, I think that's where we can get out and have some excitement, have some fun. But also, you know, I think that um, that offense contributes to our defense and it makes us want to get more stops and get more stops, you know. So um, I think we need we can turn that up a notch and continue um, to have those fast break points and um, getting those defensive stops every game. Okay, the last two questions are going to go to Tori Heck and then Chip Towers. Justin, you mentioned that you felt like you guys aren't quite to the point of completely gelling yet. What do you think is missing from that connection between you and the team? How do you completely in sync and feeling like you're totally gelled with them? Well, I think that's just because of, you know, what's going on with the world right now. Um, just, you know, the COVID and, and, you know, we have been to come to school late. Um, if we would have had that extra time in the summer, you know, I think we would be right there. And that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing because, you know, we're playing pr uh, really well right now. So just getting better, um, that means that our team can be super special. Um, that's what I'm excited about. You know, I'm glad that we're not satisfied. Um, we're not satisfied on what we're doing. We want to get better every single day. And I think this team knows we can be really special. I think the whole coaching staff knows we can be super special. So um, we won't take that as a negative. We'll take that as a positive for sure. Justin, I'm, I'm sure you're like uh, most guys that play at your level. You've, you've, you watch a lot of basketball. You've seen a lot of basketball. Can you compare or have you played with anybody either just in gyms or uh, with pro guys or around anybody who plays like severe? Can you just describe that, that kind of speed and ability to sort of split the defense and make, have all those options to either take it himself or dump it off? Played with a lot of fast point guards. Um, I don't think I've played with someone who can handle the ball that fast. Um, I played with a lot of quick guards who can get out and just kind of dribble down the court fast. But, you know, as you guys see every single night, east to west and north to south, it's, it's, it's incredible. You know, it's incredible. And I tell him that every single day. I don't think I've seen someone with the ball play that fast and be able to control the ball that fast. Um, and that's, that's one of the gifts God gave him. And um, I think that's going to, you know, that shapes his game. You guys see it every single night. He, he turns us loose when he goes. And, you know, we get him the ball and we get out. Um, and everybody else gels in, and, and it's exciting to play with, and I know it's exciting for you guys to watch. So he's a very special player. All right, thanks so much, Justin. We'll be joined by Coach Green shortly.
Are we ready? We're standing up, Mike? Yes. Okay. Right. All right, everyone, we're going to get started with Coach Crean. We're going to start with the opening statement, and then we'll move to questions. Well, I'm, I'm proud of the way we played. To, to finish this week off with three games in a week and knowing that we had gone the way we had a week before, I was worried about the cumulative effect. Um, you know, we tried to uh, tone our practices down time-wise, and uh, but you still have to prepare. You still have to practice to get ready to play. And I thought our guys tonight uh, overcame that wall in the second half and played outstanding. To get six guys in double figures is huge. That's how we want to be able to play here. And I don't know if we'll get six guys in double figures every night, but the more we can, and more we can get four or five, that's huge for us because that's the way that we're built. The keys to the game were going to be to defend the three, and we held them to 423 to win the rebounding game. We won that by 15. Uh, we got out on the break. We created some turnovers and something that we have not done here ever. Uh, we had 67 deflections, so which is a, just a monster thing to us. So the stat sheet says Severe had a double-double. He had a triple-double because he had 10 deflections. Tamani had 14 deflections, again, for the second uh, game in a row. Those are things that are tremendously important to us. You know, 15 steals is great, but the deflections, you know, drawing charges, getting hands on loose balls, getting tips, those are huge for us because we're not a big team. And, and we're going we're gonna to walk in with a size disadvantage many nights right now. But we can't walk in with a hustle disadvantage and we can't walk in with an activity disadvantage. So a lot of really good basketball from a lot of people. I thought guys got better inside of the game. I think that was huge. Severe, um, he's just scratching the surface. He's passing the ball extremely well. He's scoring. When that jumper comes, and as we get him off the ball more, where we can get it back to him inside of the half-court offense, it's even going to get better. So um, a lot of good ball. And to know that, you know, we, we didn't get the greatest game from Andrew Garcia because of the foul trouble and still have six guys in double figures, that's a good sign for us. So we, we, were, we were very concerned about this game. They have a tremendous shooting team. They're big. They're well-coached. They're mobile. And um, really, really proud of the way uh, we competed in the first half and the way we took charge in the second half. All right, we're going to start with Anthony Dasher and then Andy Walsh. Hey, Coach. Uh, if uh, my math is, uh, math is right, uh, coming into the night, uh, hasn't been a, a single player in the SEC with 10 assists. Now Severe has done it now for three straight games. You touched on him a second ago, but it's just the way he's just making this whole team run and, and, and execute. Uh, when he's going like he is, everybody just feeds off of him. No question about it. I mean, he's a charismatic kid, and, and he's a leader, and he's growing in his leadership all the time. Um, he's a happy person, right? I mean, he's, he's, you can never win. All right, in, in, in football, you can't have a moody quarterback. You can't have a moody catcher in baseball, and you cannot have a moody point guard. you got to have – that doesn't mean that, they're, that, that, that they don't get angry, but you've got to have somebody that's even keeled and excited and people want to be around and they want to follow. And Severe is like that. Severe is absolutely like that. And he's getting better and better, and I think he's going to continue to get better. We're asking a lot of him. And, uh, but he's delivering. He's doing an excellent job. And, and – uh, he makes a couple of his layups, and when that jump shot starts to go, it's going to be even better. But like I said, I think our challenge is we got to get him off the ball more, and so that you can, so that he has it, he gives it up, he gets it back. He may give it up again, he gets it back, right? And I think that will increase the cutting game even more for us. So he's doing a, he's doing a really really good job. Our offense is truly a work in progress, and uh, I think it'll get better and better and create more space and freedom and and uh, he'll be even better as we go. I don't feel be have three straight uh, double figure assist games uh, every night, but I don't think it's ever been done here. So I don't think the two had been. So to have three is highly, highly impressive. Uh, hey, coach. Um, it just it seemed like a pretty comprehensive uh, defensive effort tonight. Um, how encouraging is that to see to see that this early in the year? And I know you know it's not SEC play yet, but um, I guess it, there's been some promising signs so far. Yeah, we have to be a team. I mean, we 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 can never come in. You know, we're going to be at a size disadvantage, but we cannot be at a tenacity at disadvantage. We can't be at an activity. 
disadvantage and we can't be at a togetherness disadvantage, right? So like when you're active, and I thought Justin Carr did a great job of setting the tone defensively. And he was another double figure deflection guy tonight. And, and to have him, and he was fresh, right? He, he was a little fresher than the other guys because he didn't do much on Wednesday in the walkthrough and, and obviously didn't play Wednesday night. And so he was a real catalyst for us that way. And I think when you get guys that are active with their hands, when they're showing their length, moving their feet, and, and do we have guys that have got to get better? We've got to guard the ball better. We've got to guard the post better. But those are all things that we're going to continue to work on and we think we can improve on. But we have to get a lot better. I mean, it, it's, it's, we, we've had a good week, but we've got to get a lot better because of the competition that we're going to see down the road and because we'll have a size disadvantage. And so we've got to really make sure that we keep tightening things up every day. Okay, next we're going to go with Davis Baker and then Ryan Curley. Uh, hey, Coach, uh, you consistently talked about Jacksonville having some good shooters, but tonight you held them to uh, 17%. So what was the game plan defensively, um, and how are you guys so effective uh, limiting them from 30? Well, we, we, we didn't want to give them space. I mean, these guys can back up. They've got some NBA plus range shooters uh, with 0 and 23. So what we wanted to be make sure that we did was, was challenge everything, right? Be, be there on the pass. Um, don't let them back up without us being there as well. You know, kind of where they were, we were type of thing. And uh, they're going to they're gonna be a good team. I mean, they're going to be a very good team because they can really, really shoot the ball. 23 was shooting 70% coming into the game. Zero was shooting 54% coming into the game. 11 was shooting 54% coming into the game. And, and when you have that, plus you've got the scoring that Wood brings and Workman brings, um, those are problems. And so we, our guys in one-day prep were really ready to go and uh, – you know, we, we had some adjustments ready to go uh, from practice yesterday that we didn't end up needing, so we can save those. But the biggest thing was we had to challenge shots and we had to bring fatigue because um, you want to get into people's benches and you want to get it, you want to get the fatigue level, especially for shooters. And uh, they missed some open ones. I'm sure they missed some that, they'll, that they know could have gone down. But for the most part, our guys were pretty active with the shot challenges. Next, we're going to go with Tori Heck and then Mark Weiser. Coach, we saw some good performances tonight. You mentioned from Justin Kyer and then P.J. Horn as well. How do you see Xavier leading those guys as a, only a sophomore when these guys are graduate transfers um, and not age events there? How have you seen Xavier handle that and stepping well, up? He rooms with Justin and Andrew, and I think that helps a lot. And, and um, th there's good respect on this team. You know, the camaraderie is building. And um, I think everybody, you know, you, you, en you enjoy not only playing with Xavier, you enjoy being around Xavier. I mean, he's a happy person and he's a, uh, he's a joyful person. And, and that doesn't mean that he doesn't have bad moments and get angry. But like I said, you, you don't win with Moody, right? Especially in leadership. And he's, he's anything but, I mean, he's everything but, I should say. He's, he's, uh, uh, he's a very charismatic kid, um, can laugh at himself, uh, doesn't take himself too serious, but takes the game extremely serious. And, um, and people enjoy being around him. He's very, very confident young man. Um, I wondered uh, how, uh, when you see Tamani making those electric plays right around the basket, kind of from a head coaching perspective, if you get excited as, as maybe the fans might. And also, uh, when you look at his uh, growth that you'd like to see from game three here to game 25 uh, at the end of this regular season, what, what are you looking for in his second year? Well, I think just to continue to build on the confidence level that he has. And, and he, he's, he's getting better. The jump shot is definitely better. Um, he's got to learn to play in traffic a little bit better. And, and, and the passing will need to improve, you know, so we can play through him uh, as a passer, you know, on the drive. But the cutting, the movement, the getting on the glass, um, the going up strong, all that stuff's starting to come. I, I think he'll get better and better. I really do. He'll finish even better as we go along. And I think the bottom line for him, for Chris Brown, for a lot of guys is let the game come to you. And, and Chris Brown did that tonight. He didn't do that on Wednesday night. So he didn't have his very, a very good game. Tonight he did. He let the game come to him. He cut. He moved. Uh, and I think he's starting to recognize, you know, where that's at. And so Tamani's the same way. You know, the, it, with the way we move, all right, and the way the ball moves. And there were times in the first half the ball didn't move very well. And, and if it had, we probably would have been up more. But it moved much better in the second half. And I think – the way we play, we are not a pull it isolation team. You know, we'll isolate some in the post, 
but we are drive and kick, cut, space, get through the paint, cut behind the defense, constantly working on our cutting and, and every day. And so when you're doing that, you can't, especially with playing a kid like Justin and Sabir, you can't help but get some looks. And um, I think that's where Tamani's got to continue to grow. And I think he's got to be talked into the breath as a defensive stopper, right? Whether he's guarding the post, whether he's guarding the guard, you know, by, by Nick Claxton's sophomore year, and obviously Nick was bigger, but Nick could guard one through five. Not early. He couldn't guard one through five early, but he got to the point where he could. And that's what Tamani's got to be able to do for us. All right, I'm actually going to go back to Ryan Curley. And then after that, we'll have a last question with Chip Towers. Hey, Coach, you had 20, uh, you guys committed 22 turnovers against North Georgia. That improved to just 16 in this game. Is that something that you guys tried to clean up in practice yesterday? Well, we didn't do a lot on offense yesterday in practice. We, we really didn't. We did much more defensively. And we didn't practice very long at all. We, we need to. But a little bit of it the other night was trying to make plays that aren't there. Right. You know, we, we deliver the ball. We don't try to get cute. And, and again, a lot of our turnovers the other night were from trying to make plays for other people, but they weren't fundamentally sound. And there were a few others like it on the break. If we throw a bounce pass uh, on the break, you know, behind the defense, that's a dunk rather than a turnover. I mean, there's just a lot of little things we can get better at. And, and now hopefully we'll have a little bit of time that we can dive into the film and work through that uh, as well. But, but we want to be, a, a high possession but low turnover team or lower turnover team. And I know when you play this fast, you're going to have some turnovers. But really, if you're out playing and running and you're, and, and you're getting an advantage on the break with your first three steps and the ball's out in front and your rim running game is good, your wings are running to the corners, it should make it a lot easier. And there shouldn't be a lot of forced passing. And, and that's what we've got to continue to build on. Coaches, Chip, uh, on uh, severe – you've had a lot of great players that just the art of the layup and his speed. Uh, I, I, I don't want to go off the reservation, you know, three, three non-conference games and all that, but his ability to get to the basket, the quickness there and just convert it. Uh, it seems like at top speed, how hard is that? And why is he so good at it? And can you quantify it? Like, how fast is he well, going? I don't know. I don't know the speed. I know. I know it, he's moving, and he's got some change of gears. Uh, he came in a very good layup maker, and and there's no doubt about it. And we feel like he and Justin uh, should be as two of as, as the best layup makers. And Ty Fagan's in that boat too. Is the best layup makers that are that we play against that are in this league. And and um, uh, sometimes we miss because of context. Sometimes we miss because we don't use the board. You know, Justin had one. We don't finger roll. He should have dunked it or used the glass. You know, we'd like to have some of those back. But, but, but Severe has been taught very well by his father and his coaches before he ever got here. And we just try to expand on it and also at the same time be able to score with either hand uh, around the rim. But we try to spend a lot of time on layups, and we're going to continue to spend even more because that's how we have to win because we're trying to get a lot of cuts. All right. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Or a good, or a good weekend. I'm sorry. Good rest of the night. A good weekend.